Uh, welcome, uh, everybody, uh, those that are uh, attending and will be attending live today's session and those that will be watching this as a recorded session today. Uh, we're very excited to launch the very first session of the employ employability series, uh, how to find the job online, hosted uh, on localized by Amidist and the Alem community. Uh, we have uh, three very exciting events planned out for you today uh, that Iyad and the team will, will uh, I think, introduce uh, in more details in just a little bit. But it's all about uh, guiding you and uh, helping you in the search for an online job. Use, uh, online resources are plentiful, sometimes can be a little bit confusing, and we're here to guide you and help you uh, through that process. Uh, I'm very excited today to welcome uh, uh, Iyad Yaqub, Hayat, and Cynthia. Um, uh, thank you guys very much for your time today. I'm personally looking forward to this session a lot. Um, and uh, with that, Iyad, I'm going to hand over to you to uh, kick us off. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to uh, run sessions for, for Localized and uh, work with you on co-creating a beautiful learning experience for our constituents. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is share my screen. So we have a slide deck prepared for you for this session. So give me one second here to uh, pull the slides and I will share the screen and then we'll, we'll kick it off. All right, so can you see my screen here? Awesome, perfect. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay, so uh, Cynthia is going to kick it off. All right, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hi, Selma. Uh, well, as a start, uh, I'm very happy to be here with you today. I'm Cynthia, uh, a consultant practice leader at Spiraton, and we run a weekly session uh, in Vocalized. So this is a quick uh, intro of me, and I will let the stage for Iyad and Hayat. Well, I'm gonna go next. I'm Iyad. I'm a coach in residence with Localized, and uh, with Hayat and Sidia, we run the sessions on Localized every uh, week on uh, subjects related to career. Uh, and job search uh, for our students. We've been doing it for a while and we're happy to be here as well. Hayat. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Cynthia. Hi everyone, uh, this is Hayat. Uh, I'm a content practice leader at Sparathon. And as Cynthia and Ia just mentioned, we do career workshops every week on Mondays uh, with Localize. So we'll be glad to for you to join us. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, uh, now we will start the session, but before that, we'll set intentions. What does that mean? Setting intentions mean uh, what is the energy that would like to show up today? Like, for example, I will start my, by myself. Then uh, uh, I will let, uh, let Hayat and Iyad do it. Then you guys, Ahmed, tell me, feel free to do it also. So for me, my intentions for today, I, I would like to start this session with the energy is being uh, clear and being a coach. Can you tell me, Hayat, what is your intention for today? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, my intentions first today is to show up for this session as a thoughtful coach, a present coach. Right. What about you, Iyad? My, thank you, Hayat. My intention is to be very happy and very fun presenter. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, very creative intentions. Okay. Uh, Ahmed and Selma, feel free to tell us your intentions. I can tell you my intention is uh, uh, to learn what's new about finding a job online uh, even though i have a job it's uh, in my role is to always know what's happening what's new uh, and so i'm actually hoping to learn a lot from you guys on how to find a job online oh well so you are a learner today with us 
absolutely. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. What about you, Selma? I would say it's also like to find like a job online because like I'm not really sure about my like future career path because uh, I'm still in high school. So I think like this would like help me like decide that. Okay, so uh, how can you tell us in one word your intention for today? Like Ahmed said. Like focus and learn. Well, well, amazing, amazing. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for all the creative intentions here and all the great energy to start. So now we can start. Uh, I will let the stage for Haya. Thank you, Cynthia. Thanks again. Okay, thank you guys for coming. We're thrilled to, to be with you here today in this event, and we're so excited to embark on this amazing journey with you. So I would like to tell you a little bit about the series. So as you already know, we're going to meet with you for three times, through which we will discuss three main aspects, or the ABCs as we call them. The first one is the A, which is assess. The second is the B, build. And the third is C, communicate. We're going to start with the A today. It will be about designing your life model and how it intersects with job search. We will dive deep into some concepts that help you with your work life. And then we will end with a plan that will take your job search to action. Next week, we will meet with you again for another session where we will start building. So we will learn how to craft resumes and how to customize them. Uh, you will also learn how to build your digital profiles and portfolios and to have a digital presence that represents you. The third and the last session will be the C, which is to communicate. There we will learn how to communicate with recruiters, how to write messages, how to reach out to new people and how to answer interview questions. And yeah, there you have it. I don't want to take much of your time, so let's start fast and let's dig deep. So, uh, yeah, the mic is yours now. Thank you, Hayat. Thank you so much for uh, sharing the schedule. So what we're going to do today, we're going to start with Start Fast, as Hayat said, with the DYL concept, which is designing your life. And uh, I'm going to, for the for the next four or five minutes, I'm going to explain what is designing your life framework and how it intersects with your job search. Even if you're not actively looking for jobs right now, like Ahmed and Salma, it's still it's a valid framework to think about job search holistically. Even if you're not looking for a job in the next month or even in the in next year, is still a valid framework to th think about job search in the next five years, all right? So uh, quick background, I worked at Stanford University and uh, our center was the career center there where we help students with CVs and resumes and interviews and job fairs. We collaborated with a center called Designing Your Life Lab, which is a, a joint collaboration with the D school, the design school at Stanford. And the D school at Stanford, they apply design thinking models uh, when it comes to services and products, but designing your life lab, they took the same model, which is design thinking and apply that model to life and education and career. So they found that design thinking is a very valid model when, it think, when you think about and basically when you're trying to solve for problems that you do not have access to uh, perfect data or you don't have control over the data. It's like when you build a bridge, you have a lot of data. You cannot have like uh, you know, predictions on how things are going to work. You have to have like perfect data. Otherwise, you uh, you cannot tolerate the mistakes or the errors that are going to happen. But when it comes to life and career and education, you cannot use the same mindset or the same tools to solve for your life and career and education because what we call them wicked problems. Wicked problems, by definitions, are problems that have too many variables, right? It's not like something you can predict. It's not something you can control. It's something that you can, it's not a problem in the first place to solve for. It's actually more an experience that you live, right? Relationships, too many variables. Education, too many variables. Life, career, and a lot of things like that. So design thinking is all about less planning and more prototyping. I don't learn through thinking. 
I learn through doing. And you have this bias to action. And it's all about also reframing the problems that you have in life in a way that you, you make them prototypable, if, that, if that's a word, right? So it starts with accepting that they are problems, that they're not solvable, and there are problems that I don't want to solve. And they're not part of my focus in the first place. I don't want to solve the economy. I don't want to solve who's a, a president right now. I don't want to solve what's happening in terms of injustice in a certain country. What I can do is I accept that and move forward. And from there, I focus my energy on problems I can solve or I can influence by empathizing with the target group who I would like to work with. In this case, I'm empathizing with myself. So when I empathize with myself, because I'm the product, I'm launching myself in this world, I'm empathizing with myself. I'm trying to learn more about my values, my meaning, my uh, aspirations, my goals, my circumstances, my constraints, all that. And after I empathize, I go and define a specific problem I would like to focus on and come up with ideas. I come up with, with things related to let's say the sky is the limit, let's come up with so many ideas as possible, then I would focus on one problem, on one idea and prototype it and start with that problem. Does it really matter which one? Yes, but what the most important thing is you start doing something and you don't have perfect information. Then you go test it and you iterate and do it again and again and again. So this is the design of your life framework. It's not an engineering thinking. It's not a business thinking when you optimize for outcomes. It is not resource thinking when you have a hypothesis. It's all about empathizing. You go and ideate, and then you prototype, test, and come back. You're going to know more now from Hayat and Cynthia about how actually designing your life work, how actual design your life works when it comes to work. So what I want you to think about right now, okay, great, awesome. I'm still learning this concept, so I invite you to give yourself permission to uh, learn more about it. Then we can ask more questions and see how we can map this out to our specific situations. Okay? All right. Back to you. Thank you, Ia. Thank you for this amazing intro. So now what we're going to talk about is gravity problems. You might find the name a little bit weird, but you'll get it soon. So I want you guys to imagine yourself on the road, riding a bicycle. You're driving the same way, the same speed, and suddenly you find a little of a hill in the way. So you continue driving in the same speed, but you find yourself going slower and you don't know why. And now you can't make it to the end of the road at the same timing because you're going slower. And you're going crazy, like I'm doing the same thing. I'm driving in the same speed. There is a problem and I need a solution. So if any of you can guess what the problem was in this case. Ahmad, Salma, Iyad. No breaks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, it's much, much simpler than this. So uh, it's graffiti, actually. So... Uh, is graffiti actually a problem though? I don't think so. Because, you know, the most important factor about a problem is that it's actionable. So you can take action, you can change it. Otherwise, it cannot be called a problem in the first place. And there they are, graffiti problems. So that's why they were called graffiti problems. When we say graffiti problems, this can be broken down into two main things. The first one is simply circumstances. And the thing about circumstances is that you cannot control them. You cannot change them. You only can accept them. The other possibility of gravity problem is that they are a problem, but you're not phrasing them as once. So let's take some examples to understand this more. So a friend of mine comes up to me always with the same statement each time. He says, the whole day goes by and I don't have enough time to accomplish what I want. And every time I'm like, I hate to break it to you, but we only have 24 hours a day. Like, I wish we had more. I really do, but we, won't, we don't. We only have 24 hours a day. So this is not actually a problem. 
it's a circumstance. Another example is I want to study abroad, but I don't want to leave my family here. And again, I hate to break it to you, but we cannot be in two places at the same time, at least not yet. So my point here is that a lot of the problems that we complain about in our lives are not actually problems. Or they are problems, yet we're not praising them as ones. So the take here is to accept. And once and only you accept them, you can actually start doing something about them. So we need to accept that there is only 24 hours a day we need to accept that we cannot be in two places at the same time. It's the first and the most important step. And then comes the reframe. So you start reframing the statement to a real actionable problem that you can look for solutions for. So for example, let's take this second statement, for example, and try to reframe it. How do you think this might be possible? Okay, Cynthia, what do you think? How would you reframe the second statement to make it actually a problem or to look at it from a different way? Well, for me, um, I would take advantage of the new technology and say that I can be in two places at the same time, actually, because I can travel and also stay connected with my family every day. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. What about you, Ahmad? I was going to say actually something quite similar. I was going to say, how can I figure out how to study abroad, but still mm -hmm. keep in close contact with my family? Because mm -hmm. even though leaving is leaving, but you can still be in contact, especially again with, with uh, technology in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was thinking maybe the other way, how I can stay with my family, but study virtually with the university. Very nice. Selma. I think it's like all like similar, like just like either con keep contact with your family or maybe just like uh, you can like keep like brief con uh, contact and still like visit them. Like just because you're studying abroad doesn't mean that you can't like still see your family because you're not gonna like study forever. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. I, I actually like, I actually love how um, uh, all of you, you try to make the both of the statements happen. So you didn't want to let go of any of the studying abroad or leaving your family. So you wanted them both. But actually, sometimes in lives, you have to let one option go. So for example, you have a tomato sauce and it's a great sauce and you have the white sauce, which is also great. And when you combine them together, you have an even greater thing. So the, the mix between the both. But on the other hand, ice cream is actually great. Everyone loves ice cream. And uh, beer is also great. But with, when you try to combine the both of them, you come up with a horrible mix. So it depends on the context. And uh, yeah, it depends. So now we're going to discuss the dysfunctional beliefs with Iyad. Iyad, the stage is yours. All right. Awesome. So thank you, Hayat. Um, gravity problems, either you, you accept or you reframe or you do something about them, right? So uh, if you just consider them as like a, you're a victim of those problems, you will never be able to move forward. So accepting, rephrasing, and then you look for solutions. Now, what we want to talk about dysfunctional beliefs. Dysfunctional beliefs are basically beliefs within us that could they could have been functional at one point of time, but now they're not dysfunctional. Like they are, they're, they're limiting. They're not moving us forward. and Or they're dysfunctional in the first place. Usually most people have dysfunctional beliefs, but they don't know. Or they do know, but they don't do something about it. So either it's a new knowing thing or a doing thing, right? So dysfunctional beliefs, um, 
inconsistent thinking patterns negatively impact individuals' daily lives. Uh, think that you know, really limiting your moving forward. When it comes to job search specifically, think about the dysfunctional beliefs. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that basically creating th this tension or dissonance, dissonance between two values you have. I really love my work. I really love the work, the work I'm doing, but I, I, it's not well. I'm not well paid, right? Uh, or work is not supposed to be enjoyable. That's why they call it work. Is there's a belief inside you? It's a mindset. The underlying assumptions that drive your expectations and goals and behaviors. So what would do, what do we need need to do about that, right? So. Uh, dysfunctional beliefs are also personal. They're not universal. Some some of them are universal, like false dichotomy that we just talked about. If it's just either or, sometimes they are either or, but sometimes they're not. And we make them either or just because we didn't think about them enough, or somebody told us that we don't have enough a solution, or our data are not updated about this specific situation. For example. Uh, if I want to get a good job, I have to go to a prestigious school, right? So I cannot afford uh, going to a prestigious school, so I cannot afford a good job, and then I'm doomed, basically, at this point. So think about what kind of functional or dysfunctional beliefs and how you can reframe a, a belief to, to make it functional for you, for yourself, all right? So an example here, I should already know where I'm I'm going. Uh and this is basically because I don't know, I'm not going. <laughs> That's kind of, I'm I'm building a condition uh, when it comes to moving forward on something that is knowing and I'm not getting the knowing. That's why I'm, I'm not moving forward, right? It's like we're saying to ourselves, there's something hidden somewhere. I need to find it and it's waiting for me, but I'm not finding it. Till I find it, I will move forward. Till I graduate, I'm going to do that. Till I finish this project, I'm going to do that, right? There's like always this condition that creates a lot of procrastination, creates a lot of tension within our lives. And we never navigate through these emotions and ideas and beliefs to actually move forward because we're there's some there's something happening within us, right? A functional belief, however, is like enjoyment and guide to finding the right work for you, right? Uh, you cannot know where you are going until you know where you are, right? So it's like, uh, it, it's just a, it's a, it's a more action oriented and you it gives you that sense of agency and autonomy and, and, and power over what you can do and you can influence. So more importantly right now is what, what we need to do is to think about your dysfunctional belief. Think about a dysfunctional belief or limiting belief that because of this belief, you feel like you're not moving forward in your life, uh, especially when it comes to job search or career or jobs in general. All right, so let's start with this time. Let's start with Cynthia. Cynthia, what do you think? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Iyad. Uh, for me, it might be lack of sleep. Like they, these days, uh, I, I can't sleep very well. So it's... Uh, uh, and it's not doing uh, well or like there is no chance to make it better because the circumstances around me uh, is like that. So what I said, that, okay, I can't sleep. What should I do? Uh, and it's very critical for me, actually, uh, because if I didn't sleep, I can't work. I can't focus. But I said, okay, I will adapt because I tried to sleep and it didn't work. Uh, after that, I said, okay, who said that if I uh, don't sleep, I will not work? So I said to myself that I will adapt and sleep in different hours when everyone else is sleeping. Um, and yes, this is it, adapting actually. And it's working sometimes, yes. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. Ahmed, what, you what do you think? I have a lot of thoughts on this, yeah, actually. <laughs> I think one of the things that resonated with me actually quite a bit is in the previous slide around time. And I think a lot of dysfunctional beliefs have to originally to originally originate from a lack of time. And, and that can be job search, right? So if I'm doing something, if I'm studying and I'm looking for a job, I don't have time to do it properly. 
for me personally, it was at a certain point exercise. I want to exercise. I want to exercise. I want to exercise, but I don't have time to exercise. Um, so I think uh, um, so. So those are, I guess, like the, the dysfunctional beliefs that I think I can come up with. Uh, functional beliefs. Um, I guess how to reframe it. Um, and and, I, and I'm going to try it and I'm going to ask you about something else yeah, because I'd love your input on this because I think dysfunctional beliefs are not so straightforward, right? Cynthia was saying she she had the, uh, dysfunctional beliefs. She's overcoming it. She said sometimes it's a work in progress. It's something that you work on. Um, so I'm working out now regularly, but I'm waking up at 5 a.m. to work out. So I'm not getting sleep. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah. in terms of a functional, I, I don't know what to say about a functional belief, actually. Uh, if, uh, um, well, it's, for it's me, difficult. yes, yes. I, I wanted to share something like more similar to the context here. Like, for example, uh, I'm continuing my MBA now in Hungary and I used to study engineering. So they told me that you cannot apply for MBA especially in this scholarship, that I'm, I'm approved in scholarship. I told them why. They told me because the MBA is different than engineering. It's not the same uh, uh, specialization. Uh, I was afraid, actually, because uh, maybe it will not work. But then I said, OK, maybe outside the country that I'm living in, uh, they can consider it. Because I believe that it can be better for me. And this is the thing that I want, not the people want for me. So I tried, I said, okay, let's give it a try. And I tried and uh, uh, it was done. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm here. <laughs> so I think th this was a dysfunctional belief for me at the first stage, because the first time I didn't apply because of that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank is, you. Is, is reframing, is reframing, I'm just, if what Cynthia say, if, is reframing something to saying this is good for me, so I'm gonna push extra harder to do it. Does that qualify as a functional statement or as a functional belief? Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. I would like to get promoted to a VP, for example. Let's say this is your goal. Like I want to be a vice president, right? But I'm not gonna be promoted because they only promote people with a, with a certain behavior and I cannot do this behavior so i would never be promoted let's say let's put it this way so till you get to articulate this way till you are actually say it you will never see the actual implication of your belief on your behavior so you have to articulate that in a way or, not, or think about it now you say okay well maybe that's not true maybe it's not about the background there is a, an evidence there's a data point that's telling me people do not belong to this certain background they are getting promoted so it's actually a dysfunctional belief that to get promoted, you have to be this way. It's not like that. It's actually the actual belief, I'm going to work harder so I can get promoted, right? So changing how you see something, like a reframe, through a data point, thinking rationally instead of just getting into your head and, and not analyze it, that would be a dysfunctional belief, right? Or job search, why bother I, I, I search for jobs? Everything is wasta, everything is connections, everything is nepotism and favoritism. So why would I why should I bother? Right. But now we know that people are building connections and meaningful connections are not wasta. Yeah, you know, and uh, they, you can apply directly and attend career fairs and you have more control over your career than just saying, you know, what, I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do in my life. And you spend years, years and years just saying that. And that's a dysfunctional belief because you're not getting to where you want based on a the behavior. There's a gap and delta between your goals and your behaviors because of your, your beliefs, right? Does that make sense? Yes, okay, it does. Awesome. I, I'm wondering if... But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. That makes yeah, I wanted to ask sense. Selma. Selma, what do you think from your perspective? What, what, what is a dysfunctional belief that you have today that is not helping you or it's not moving you as fast as you want to move? Um, I don't know like something specific, but like something like popped up to my mind, which is like something I like, like to do is like I always like delay when I have something to do. 
um, like because I think that I work better under pressure. So like even if I have like a lot of time to like do something, I would like delay it and like, oh, I'll just do it in one day. I'll just do it in one week, even though it like needs more time. Because I think that when I'm pressured to do something, I do better. But sometimes that like backfires and it doesn't really work that well. Okay. So what are the dysfunctional beliefs? I don't know. I'm sorry. No, think about it. What is something that I have a, this mindset, this belief inside me, why is not, it's not serving me? I think I like, I like agree with what like you said before with like um, the Wasta where like uh, something with like the nepotism where like you're, oh, like I can't get something because like other people are like getting them for like for favor and like something like that. And you just like uh, feel discouraged because of like that, because you feel discouraged to like look for stuff. And even though it's like in the far future, you just like don't like start looking up about your future because like of the stuff that you see right now, which is not like completely true because it's not everywhere. Like you won't like see it. Uh, you won't see favoritism in every job opportunity and every like stuff. But it's still like sometimes discourage you, which I think like you should not focus on that so much. Okay, perfect. Awesome, awesome. Amazing, amazing. Uh, one of the beliefs that if I see other people succeeding in a way that is not consistent with my values, this means less work when it's when, uh, coming from me right that's basically um my my willpower is sensitive to inconsistent equity when it comes to job search maybe that's a belief right so to break this cycle say my willpower and dedication to a cause that serves me is not contingent it's not conditional on something it's actually independent from something. That's a functional belief, right? Because it's going to move you forward. That would be one way to do it. That's a reframe. Uh, the gravity problem that Hayat talked about is wasta. I cannot change the wasta and, and, or cannot change nepotism in, in Jordan or Amman or something. I cannot do that, right? So I'm going to accept it. But what I can ex what I can do, what I can work on is how I show up when it comes to job search. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. All right. So the final... Would, would, would the, sorry, Ed, would, would the functional uh, belief be that even though I don't have a WASTA, I believe that through proper networking, I can create that... I'm going to... We say WASTA in the, in the mirror, but more and more I believe it's just networking like every other country in the world, right? Um, um, would that be a functional belief? But functional belief for, for Ahmed. For Ahmed, yes, yes, of course. I'm talking about yes. yes. Exactly. That would be Ahmed. If this drives the behavior you would like to see and you're, it moves you towards your goal, you're absolutely right. So, Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. Hayat, do you want to share anything on functional beliefs? I had this thought a lot when I started doing university. So um, I always thought that uh, as long as I'm majoring in something that I don't have passion for, that means um, uh, like five years of my life are going to waste. So I, I can't do anything in my life because all of my time is going to university, which I don't like. But then... I realized that I can do a lot of things and I can work and I can grow while doing university. So that was a dysfunctional belief for me. Amazing. Nice. A dysfunctional belief for Iyad is there are people who are uh, meant to be leaders and people who are not meant to be leaders. All right. What I mean by meant that their attitude and the way they challenge people and holding I hold them accountable they would call them drivers uh, people who are like that they're drivers in the world it's like if you see a movie uh um 
can't remember the name, but they're like a, more like a categories of people. And there are people who are like amiable, nice people, agreeable, right? And these people are like, they're not fortunate in the workplace just because the workplace is skewed toward people who are drivers, get things done and all that. So what I l later f figured out that this is a dysfunctional belief, even if it's, there's a gravity problem attached to it, which is, yes, data suggests that people who are drivers are actually more promotable and they get more promotions because they get things done and people like that. So I was like, I'm not meant to it. Maybe I need to not, I, I don't want to work in corporate America anymore. Here's the functional belief. I driver Drivers and amiables are not type of people. It's a superpower. I use it when I want to. And I can drive when I need to drive, and I can be agreeable and amiable when I want to be. So I'm both. And I do that, this behavior, when it serves me and serves the organization. So that's an example from my personal life, right? <laughs> cool. All right. So last but not least, Cynthia is going to take us to the action planning. Thank you, Iyad. Thank you so much for all the clarification. Uh, experiences that you shared, you and the guys here. Uh, well, now what we'll do, we will go through the action plan. And uh, let me start me and Hayat. What do you think, Hayat? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay, Hayat knows uh, nothing about this. Uh, it's an improv imp improvisation <laughs> between us. So, Obviously. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hayat, uh, tell me about a goal that you wanted to achieve at the end of the month. Uh, at the end of this month? Um, yes. By 30 days, 60 days, okay. that you want, 90 days. Okay. Let's say finding a new job. Just okay. kidding. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, how, how long the goal is? Like ninety days. Um, I think I think yeah, it needs ninety days. Okay, okay. So your goal in ninety days is to find a new job. Yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, what do you think the the skills that you need to in order to achieve that? Um. Actually, I need a lot of skills because um, like the journey of job search requires a lot. Like I need to learn how to write uh, CVs. I need to learn how to enhance my profiles, my digital profiles, how to build my portfolio and how to actually apply for jobs and to connect with people and these things. Okay, okay, amazing. Uh, before we, we go to the other part, uh, let me ask you, uh, where do you feel that you are stuck the most in your journey of job search? Mm -hmm. mm, that's a really good question. I feel like connecting with people is a tricky part for me. So mm -hmm. that's the, that could be the most difficult part. Okay. Okay. So uh, here, what do you think the tools that might help? Uh, with connecting with people specifically? Yes. What do you think can help you the most? Tools, support? Um, yeah, of course, I can use some help with digital tools. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can also use uh, like some coaching, for example, to know exactly how to reach out to people in this, con in this context, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Okay, um, now if you can tell me, uh, after the 90 days, what would be good for you? Mm. Uh, what would be that good you for feel, me? Yes, you feel that you are satisfied with your goal. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in 90 days, I will be a, a content strategist in an intersectional feminist organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so uh, can you tell me what is the first step that you will take toward this goal? Hmm. The first step 
is that I'm going to go to my LinkedIn account and I'm going to optimize it to be more professional. Perfect, perfect. This is the first small step that you will do, right? Yes. Okay, amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your goal with me. How do you feel now? Uh, I feel good, actually. I feel great. <laughs> good. Uh, how, how, how do you feel, if I can say, before and after? Um, uh, uh, actually, I was just making up a scenario. I'm not looking for any jobs. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. now I feel like, like, but... Uh, when I put myself in the shoes of someone who is looking for jobs and mm -hmm. now that I have answered all of your questions I have I feel like I have a more clear image in my mind to my mm -hmm. journey of the job search amazing amazing thank you thank you so much well as you uh, can see here guys uh, Hayat was stuck in finding connections for her job so this was the main issue here when I asked her, how do you feel now and how did you feel before? Because she said a, a scenario or something, but particularly here, those are the powerful questions that can lead us to uh, know more what are the things that can help us to go through or jump uh, on this uh, stucking point. Well, okay, I'm stucking here. I have a goal. I need to achieve it. I have a plan. And maybe the plan is not clear. And maybe uh, there, there are some blockers. So through these questions, we can know these blockers. We can know uh, the clear path that we are going through. So uh, for now, uh, anyone would like to do the same? Actually, we will do like a practice here. So who would like to start? The same thing that Hayat did, but I need from you like a personal goal here because we need like actual uh, practice I would vote for Selma oh. yes, me too. I vote too a free vote <laughs> well Selma I think the stage is yours <laughs> can I can I not do it though because yeah. I don't really I don't think like I have a goal for like the next month currently mm -hmm. I don't okay. think that, that I have one, so mm. can I not do it? Yes, no problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, you can you can tell okay. me about any goal. What, Ahmed? No, no, go ahead, go ahead, continue, yeah. please. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, well, Salma, uh, feel free to tell me anything you want to achieve uh, in the future period, like in the next month, next two months, next year, anything you have in mind you want to achieve. Not anything in specific, as I have mentioned before, I'm still in high school in the last year. So um, I'm just like trying to, since like I have kind of like, I graduate, yes, last last year, mm -hmm. last year of high school. Uh, I'm just like trying to like build a mindset to like pay for like my future of like what I'm trying to like decide for it. So mm -hmm. I don't really have like anything in specific now, but I think like I just like want to just learn in general about more stuff, like just read more, uh, look for more opportunities and just like stuff like that. Okay, amazing, amazing. So can you tell me what do you think that can help you the most here? Like One maybe... thing you feel that can help you through the things that you said to me. Dedication maybe? Dedication, amazing. Ded dedication in the context of what exactly? Um, dedication to like my goal because it's not a very like specific one. So I would mm -hmm. have to have like dedication to just like work on it more. Okay, okay, amazing. Um, what what are the tools that uh, you feel that you need? Um. Communication and searching, like trying to like ask about like stuff and just like find new information, to just like build on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what do you think uh, the plan that can lead you through this way? 
um, to have already like established like um, like I would say sort of, I feel like I'm repeating the same stuff but like to have established like a good like part of my goal that I want to achieve because it's just like all just building on it into each other just like adding to it I like just um, I feel like just taking like a few steps a few little steps would just like Make me okay. feel happy. Okay. From what you told me now, uh, Salma, what do you think is your goal? <laughs> I I don't know. Why? Um. I'm like sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just like trying to like um. Okay. Okay. Very I'm like very an indecisive person, so mm -hmm. I like find it hard sometimes to like uh, focus on like um, my goals. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just like limited all the, uh, like I limited to like a few ones, but I just like always find it hard to just like choose a specific one. Mm -hmm. So I like still don't know what's like my goal. Okay, okay. Amazing, amazing. Actually, not always. You, you need to know what is your goal, right? Because if we can, uh, what uh, uh, Iyad said in the dysfunctional beliefs, that you need to know where are you going, okay? Yes. Sometimes I need to know where am I now to know where am I going. So uh, no worries, it's, like, it's not like a template. I'm, I'm glad that we did this discussion actually because Selma uh, like gave me a new perspective here. Uh, and it's important to mention it to you guys because those the questions they are not templates that we need to follow or always you need to have the same goal or the the same thing because for Hayat it can be the goal that she told me about but for Selma it can be something else right <laughs> yeah so this is it but here is the questions that you can use uh, to know more. Uh, that you want now we will stop here for any questions you have feel free to ask any one of us any questions i think have. it's pretty interesting what ahmad just oh, sorry Cindy. i was just saying that it's pretty interesting. good setting a goal be to identify the goal that i want to work on so my goal for the next like month to set a goal to actually set a goal. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, amazing, this can amazing. be the case too. Amazing. And is is that possible? Is that some? I mean, if I'm indecisive, if I if I am an indecisive person, and I'm trying to pick where to focus, right? That could be a task in itself. Of course, exactly. Awesome. A couple of comments here. Sometimes the words words make worlds, right? So uh, could be a word that is a triggering something in your brain that creates this indecisiveness. Changing the word alone would change all your mindset and, and drive a totally different behavior. So for example, if you say, Selma, for example, back to you. What is your goal for the next 60 days? You said, I don't know. I'm indecisive. I don't know. I don't have goals. And I, I don't know. And Right? Because the word goal has a specific meaning and definition in your brain. Right? But if I ask you the question in a different way, Selma, what are you feeling? What, where do you feel your energy is flowing into in the next 60 days. I feel like this question is like too abstract because like it could like mean a lot of things. Um, so I wouldn't like know where to approach it from. Wonderful, keep going. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I feel like um, the direction like I'm trying to go like for the next 60 days is um, 
That's not my question. I didn't oh, ask sorry. You. So where are your energies flowing into? Where do you feel like what's on your mind? It's less about where you want to get to. It's about what you would like to explore. Wow, that's the, uh, I've never thought about that before. So it's kind of like, like in my face. So you don't have to answer the question right now, but think yeah. about it from a process perspective, then a destination or an outcome perspective. Because mm -hmm. when you think about destination or outcome, we feel that our space is becoming tighter and tighter and tighter. And this means opportunity cost. This means I'm going to lose something. This means I'm going to, my time is not under my control anymore. Maybe I'm going to regret my decision. Maybe I don't have a lot of data, all these things. And if you have a natural tendency to have a beautiful outcome or, or uh, something that you feel proud of after you finish sense of accomplishment, this becomes harder and harder to make that decision about what, where I want to go. But if you think about it from a prototyping perspective, that's why we're focusing on designing your life on less planning and commitment and more about prototyping. And the lower the bar of your prototype and the, the more clear, the clearer the prototype, the less commitment and less opportunity cost and less regret, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Actually, that was. Thank you for like that question. It made me like think about it. Exactly. So think about it. Goals. What is a reframe of a goal? What is a dis dysfunctional belief coming out of the word goal? This may this making me not moving forward. Same thing for Ahmad. Same thing for every one of us. Right. We have words that once we hear, it triggers a dysfunctional belief. Mm -hmm. So just changing the word that all alone, just changing the word creates an open and open up a whole new world of possibilities for us. I use that with a lot with, at work is uh, when I work with my team, hey team, what are the top three priorities of the, of this of this week? And immediately uh, people think about, whoa, uh, so I have 700,000 things I need to finish, top three priorities. I'm not sure if I, I want to do this, I'm gonna drop this, all right? So instead, I would say, instead of having like top three priorities, I don't use these words anymore with my team. People work for me. I would say, hey team, what are you going to enjoy working on this week and what you'd like to push to the next week? And people feel like, oh, I have, a, I have control over my schedule. I can do whatever I want this week as long as serving the goal of the organization and I have control over things that I can push to next week, right? So think about what brings you happiness and joy because the mind at, at, at one point is just going to follow the path that is going to bring more rewards. Okay. So, all right, let's stop here. We're about time. Thank you so much for your time. If you have more questions, please reach out to Ahmed or to us. And whether this session is recorded, so we're going to send you uh, some materials with the recording. And next time you, you come to our session, we're going to have, uh, more about building your brand and how to build your resume and portfolio or, and, and your image and everything and reputation and all that. So in order to step uh, into your uh, into your world of job search and, 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 and designing your life. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you, Salma. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Hayat. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Iyad. And uh, looking forward to chat next week. Thank you, Ia. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Salma. Thank you, too.